Do you know that nearly 45,000 people die annually in the U.S. alone because of a lack of health care? According to a study published by the American Journal of Public Health, millions of Americans have no health care. These Americans often delay treatment. Someone could be in a dire situation and not even know it. But if they do receive treatment, they end up paying straight out of their pocket. As a first world country, this is unacceptable. No one plans to get sick or hurt, but most people need medical care at some point and someone has to pay for it. In seventh grade, I broke my leg severely in three different places. If you draw your attention here, on the left, you can see what I paid for such treatment with healthcare. On the right, you can see what I would have paid if I did not have healthcare. It is a big difference. $2,865 to be exact. In the U.S., everyone should receive the same level of care. That is why free universal health care is needed. By using Canada's system as a model, I am going to tell you why the current health care system is not working and needs to be fixed, why free health care will be affordable in such a big country, what will be covered, and how it will last. Our current healthcare system is not working and needs to be fixed. But first, what is healthcare? Health policy expert Craig M. Wax states that healthcare is all the goods, services, and payment mechanisms for taking care and maintaining one's health. It includes, but is not limited to, physician offices, hospitals, labs, radiology centers, physical therapy offices, pharmaceutical companies, and corporate healthcare systems. The World Health Organization argues, healthcare is a vital basic need. Providing citizens with access to healthcare is one of the most important roles of a government. With healthcare, you can get treated for medical emergencies. You pay less for covered in network healthcare, which protects you from unexpected high medical costs. And you receive free preventive care, such as vaccines, screenings, and checkups. Hence, the US's current system is a problem. It is not universal. Vancouver-based orthopedic surgeon Dr. Brian Day states, the thing that is wrong with the U.S. is it needs universal health care. It's not available to all its citizens because it depends on employment. Colleen Flood, director of the University of Ottawa Center for Health, Law, Policy and Ethics says, Losing a job is bad enough, but to imagine that you're going to have to lose everything you've got to qualify for Medicaid, sell your house, sell your car before you get any medical coverage. Also, healthcare in the US is expensive. As you can see here, it has the most expensive healthcare system in the world. First, you have a deductible. This is the amount you pay each year before your health insurance pays this portion of the cost of co covered services such as tests, surgeries, or procedures. This deductible could be 1,000, 2,000, or more dollars. Insurance companies will not pay benefits 
until this deductible has been met. Also, for general office visits and prescriptions, you have fixed payments such as a $25 or $30 copay. However, without healthcare, these bills would be much higher. Like hundreds of dollars for each visit or for each prescription medication. In general, this will add up over time. And you will then find it difficult to pay medical bills. Princeton University health economist Yu Reinhart notes that the U.S. has left 40 million people uninsured and medical bills have become the second leading cause of personal bankruptcy in the U.S. The expensive U.S. health system produces poorer outcomes in health than do the cheaper systems in other nations. Not only is it expensive, it is also ineffective. It is difficult to access and use. It is also hard to find good doctors. And it emphasizes intervention and not prevention and health management. It must be fixed. Senator McCain calls for reforms to bring down costs and make expenditures more effective in health results by stating, we can and must provide access to health care for all our citizens. As advocates of health care reform see it, change in the United States health care system has become an economic necessity, not just socially desirable or politically popular. However, some may say that instituting free universal health care will be too expensive, especially for such a big country, but it is affordable. Let's take a look at Canada's free health care system. It is a single payer system known as Medicare. Every citizen pays into a publicly run health insurance program, typically through taxes. And the government uses these funds to pay for health care. Also, private insurance options make medical care accessible for those who don't qualify for Canada's public system or are waiting for their public to begin. Dr. Danielle Martin, Chief Medical Officer at Women's College Hospital and Professor at the University of Toronto wrote, to Canadians, the notion that access to health care should be based on need not ability to pay is a defining national value. Therefore, it is available to all legal citizens, permanent residents, some work permits, and some refugees, regardless of income, employment, or health condition. It also offers a range of doctors, hospitals, and care to choose from. This gives individuals greater control over their health care, providing the ability to choose their doctors based on approach or reputation. Also, if a Canadian needs emergency care, they receive the care immediately. As a result, as this graph shows, Canada has a longer life expectancy than the U.S. Dr. Michael Dechter, Chair of the National Board of the Canadian Institute for Health Information and former Deputy Minister of Health in Ontario states, we do well on life expectancy and immunization of children compared to the United States. According to the American Journal of Public Health, in 2019, health expenses drove more Americans into bankruptcy than any other reason. Canadians don't typically worry about medical bankruptcy. In a real life example, patient Carolyn Canfield had to confront a life-threatening cancer diagnosis, but not the endless medical costs that many in the US face. She saw a doctor who referred her for testing. The biopsy revealed an infectious growth 
and her doctor referred her to a specialist. She said, that cost me zero dollars. I had no out-of-pocket expenses. I never saw a bill. Wendell Potter, an American advocate for health insurance payment reform, said they do not want people to think they need to wait for care that was life-saving. In the U.S., many people wait and never get the care they need because they're either uninsured or underinsured. As this graph shows, it is predicted that by 2026, 22 more million people could be uninsured in the U.S. Canadians don't push hard enough for the system to get better because they're always relieved that it's not the American system. Cheryl Camilo, a former technical director for the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services said, Americans could benefit from the Canadian system with less cost, even after factoring in taxes, more convenience, more choice, more opportunity in work lives, more time, more happiness, more social cohesion, and more value. Dr. Dector notes that the U.S. spends about 40% more on healthcare in total than Canada. Therefore, free healthcare will be affordable in the U.S. if the following occur. There should be an increased investment in preventive care services, specifically those that have been proven to reduce the prevalence of preventable diseases, such as free vaccines and screening programs. This would help reduce or at least defer future high cost spending. Also, increased investment in primary care allows health plans to not only reduce the cost of treating high risk patients, but improve the quality of health services. This should be supported by efforts to establish price transparency for all healthcare services. Such transparency likely will contribute to reducing excessively high healthcare costs by informing the public about their cost of care and creating more competition in the healthcare industry. Also, a share of the overall cost of healthcare in the U.S. is due to high administration costs. Much of these high administration costs are due to complexities in billing, which is exasperated by multiple payers. Of all hospital spending in the U.S., 25% is dedicated to administrative costs, nearly $200 billion. In comparison, Canada dedicates only 12% of hospital spending to administrative costs. No link has been found between higher administrative costs and higher quality care. Now that we understand how Canada's healthcare system works, some may wonder what will be covered. Canada's services cover all care deemed medically necessary. This includes hospitals or doctor visits, as well as childbirth and surgery. Also, prescription drugs given in a hospital are covered. However, there are restrictions within Canada's public system. Prescription drugs taken outside of hospital settings are often not covered, but Canada does set a maximum price for drugs to deliver lower prices. Also, dental care, vision care, and rehabilitation services are also usually not covered by Medicare. Medically unnecessary cosmic surgery is not covered either, so you'll have to pay out of pocket, but you can invest in a private insurance plan. Since we are now aware of what is covered, some may question how free healthcare system will last, especially with presidential changes. A foundation of comprehensive and longitudinal primary care is needed. It is important that the patient and primary care physician relationship and its comprehensiveness have the greatest effect on healthcare outcomes and costs over the long term. Also, payment policies must change to reflect a greater investment in primary care. Congress and state legislatures must enact comprehensiveness legislation to achieve these change. It must address the uninsured and restructure the system to promote 
pay differently. Extensive worldwide research supports the value of a primary care-based healthcare to ensure longevity. This framework provides appropriate and affordable healthcare coverage that achieves better health outcomes, higher patient satisfaction, and more efficient use of resources. In conclusion, healthcare in the U.S. is a problem that needs to be fixed and free healthcare is the solution. Ensuring that all people in the U.S. have affordable health care coverage that provides a defined set of essential health benefits is necessary in order to move towards a healthier and more productive society. Also, a health care system that targets the medically necessary issues is what is needed in the U.S. The U.S. will only achieve the type of health care system that will last through a framework of health care coverage for all that is foundationally built on primary care. Nobody should lose their life because they can't afford health care. People have the responsibility to take care of their own health. That's why having access to health care is a human right. As shown here, health insurance coverage reduces mortality. Health care saves lives. Therefore, by making health care free in the U.S., those 45,000 deaths will change to zero. Thank you.